Dear Mr. Chairman, dear friends, dear colleagues, first, I would like to thank you for inviting me joining the ninth All-Russian Erythmology Conference. This is my honor and privilege to join you. Now, let's go together to my presentation regarding artificial intelligence in cardiac electrophysiology, current status, and future perspective. So, regarding this presentation, I have no conflict of interest to declare. First, I would like to emphasize that the content of my presentation has nothing to do with digital health in cardiology and cardiac electrophysiology. If you are interested in application of digital health in cardiology and cardiac electrophysiology, I would like to recommend you this recent uh, statement on digital health in arrhythmia management published in Heart Rhythm Journal. It is an interesting review and overview of the topic of digital health. So, going back to the artificial intelligence, it is not something new. The first art article was published in 1936 and it was on computing the numbers and its application for decision making and problem solving. This article was the basis for the computers. And then the same author in 1950 wrote an article about what is the basics of intelligence. Is it possible that the machines and the computers have intelligence? And that was the cornerstone of artificial intelligence in 1950. So now the question is, the artificial intelligence is here in the last 60 years from 1950 to now, but it took a long way until uh, artificial intelligence find its way to medicine. You can see these are the number of publications in PubMed with artificial intelligence and you can see the number increased dramatically from 2017 2018 and the number of publications are increasing. The same phenomenon we can see in the articles on deep learning in medicine and also articles on convoluted neural network, which is also a kind of deep learning. So it means that the artificial intelligence is there and has arrived the medicine and it will have a large impact on our future practice and the way that the medicine will look like in the coming years and decades. So what is artificial intelligence? So the first step, is that today we have a big complex data. Usually when we use the data, we have some parameters from the patient, ECG, whatsoever. Now we have a more complex data. We have the clinical data, social data, behavioral data, genetic data, epigenetic data, and all these data together form a big complex data. And now we can analyze this data in another way because to today's, we have high computing power. We have very powerful computers. We have cloud computing. So it gives us the possibility to use artificial intelligence algorithm. It means machine learning and deep learning algorithm to perform tasks that normally requires human intelligence. And this is the artificial intelligence. It means the high computing power using big complex data results in tasks which usually requires human intelligence. And we can classify these tasks in three groups. The first group is problem solving. The second group is reasoning. And the third group is learning and generalized learning. What is the next step in artificial intelligence? Right now, the computers are starting to learn with human supervision, even without human supervision. But still, there is a major difference between us and computer. And that is the self-awareness and self-consciousness. And when the computers develop further, especially with quantum computing and the next generation faster computers, at one point, the computers will also gain self-awareness and self-consciousness. And this is the point of singularity, which the computers gain self-awareness, self-consciousness, they can develop themselves further without human assistance and they may even become more intelligent 
than the humans. And this is the point of singularity. There are different predictions and we may reach this point of singularity before the mid of this century. So go back to the reality and we look at the articles published in medicine and we see many terms like machine learning and deep learning. What is the difference between these two methods? In machine learning, we have uh, still some algorithm based on artificial intelligence, but as you can see here, we need a human interface. It means we have some data, the human extracts some features, then give these features to the computer algorithm, and the computer algorithm has an output. So machine learning, what is the application of machine learning in medicine? We usually use it for classification and prediction. For example, is this patient going to be a responder to CRT therapy? Yes, no. This is a prediction. We usually use machine learning. What is the difference between deep learning and machine learning? In deep learning, we have no human interface. That's why the machine analyzes the data, take the data without human interface. And these methods are usually used for image processing. For example, object recognition, pattern recognition. These are the application of deep learning. What are the application in medicine? Is it a diagnosis? Is it sinus rhythm? Is it atrial fibrillation? Is, it, is this a lung cancer? or it's not a lung cancer. Is it the breast cancer or no breast cancer? Image recognition, object recognition, pattern recognition. This is deep learning without human interface. And this is very important because right now we have two options, supervised learning with human supervision and unsupervised learning, which is very interesting and promising for the developments in the future. Based on artificial intelligence, very soon we will have virtual health guidance. What it means? We have a big data, we have traditional machine learning, but now the modern deep learning. And based on this algorithm and artificial intelligence methods, we will have four outputs. The first one is disease prediction, and this is very important. For example, predicting who will get atrial fibrillation in sinus rhythm. Who will get myocardial infarction in the next two weeks? Who will get sudden cardiac death in the next two weeks? This is beyond our capacity as doctors and as humans. The second one is enhanced detection and diagnosis. For example, in ECG, we can make the diagnosis of atrial fibrillation, but uh, measuring the ejection fraction based on ECG, this is beyond our capacity but the artificial intelligence can measure ejection fraction out of ECG, and this is the enhanced detection and enhanced diagnosis. It can help us to manage and help us by decision-making based on the literature, and therefore, we're going to the last point, and it can help us to prioritize treatment to the patients and also predicting outcome. Who will benefit from CRT? who will benefit from VT ablation, and who will stay in sinus rhythm, for example, after atrial fibrillation ablation. Now let's look together some interesting um, examples. This is an example of a cardiologist uh, level arrhythmia detection and classification based on deep learning, deep neural network, 91,000 single lead ECG. And it is very interesting to see that these uh, algorithm based on artificial intelligence has the accuracy of cardiologists and in many cases the accuracy was beyond achieved by the cardiologists to make the diagnosis of different kind of, kind of arrhythmia based on single lead ECG. Uh, management and decision support. This is an example. For example, using 12 lead ECG instead of using doctors to triage the patient in emergency department, we can use deep learning to decide which ECG we encounter. This is a normal ECG, this is abnormal. If this is abnormal, is this an emergency or is not an emergency? So we can use to classify the patient it, and this uh, artificial intelligence algorithm help us to make a better, better, to make a better decision 
and also make a better management of our patients. We discussed about enhancing the diagnosis and you can see this is a very interesting example as we discussed already that artificial intelligence is enabled based on ECG algorithm to identify patients with LV dysfunction based on ECG. And right now, the overall accuracy, as you can see here, is 85. The area under curve is 85.4. And why it's, it's still we have a way to go, but we have to remember this is only artificial intelligence based on ECG. If we give other parameters, if we use our big and complex data, the accuracy of this algorithm will rise still and will approach maybe to 100% or something like that. This is also another very interesting example which showed that the uh, artificial intelligence can use ECG to identify patients with LV dysfunction. And I would like to emphasize just this finding of the study. When you look here, these are all patients that at the time that the uh, at the time of the study, at the time of the ECG analysis, has normal function, has normal LV function. So these patients have all normal LV function. The artificial intelligence, however, classified some of them as patients with LV dysfunction. Then they followed the patient and they saw that if artificial intelligence algorithm identify one patient as a patient with LV dysfunction, without LV dysfunction, the possibility that this patient develop LV dysfunction in the next years is four times higher than patients without this prediction. It means that the, the algorithm can identify some characteristics in ECG even in patients with normal LV function which shows the risk of developing LV dysfunction in the future. And this is exactly the application of artificial intelligence in disease prediction. And this will, this is a revolution in the, car, in the field of medicine, cardiology, and especially uh, cardiac electrophysiology. This is a very interesting study also showed that the al uh, artificial intelligence algorithm can predict age and gender of the patient based on ECG and it is very interesting there are some discrepancies in some patients between predicted age and actual age and then they look further to these patients these are two examples and it's very interesting sometimes the artificial intelligence algorithms say that the patient is older than he actually was and they look and they saw that this is a patient which is usually obese and had many risk factors and sometimes the artificial intelligence algorithm predicted the age much lower than the real age of the patient and usually these were patients who were very healthy and uh, not obese and they were physically active patients and actually they find out that the uh, artificial intelligence can calculate the real biological age based on the ECG finding and this is also very interesting. So we go beyond uh, ECG and this is a very interesting study which uh, used face imaging as a method for diagnosing coronary artery disease. It means there is no ECG, there is nothing, but the, the algorithm and the computer just uses four images from front, top, right and left and then based on these four images predicts if the patient has coronary artery disease or not. The algorithm has still an area under curve which is 0.75 as you can see here. But look, it's very interesting. Even just with images and without supplementary data is much, much more accurate than other known scores in the field of cardiology. So still there is a way to go, but it shows that uh, for example, artificial intelligence would be able soon to use video surveillance to identify patients with coronary artery disease. And this is an interesting example and a small study from China, which showed that video surveillance 
and reading the face of the patients and analyzing it through a deep neural network, a deep learning algorithm, can identify the patients with sinus rhythm and patients with atrial fibrillation with a very high accuracy. This is what we usually as humans, we are not able to do, but you can see today we have algorithm with base, which based on video surveillance and image processing can identify patients with atrial fibrillation compared to those in sinus rhythm. So the most important question is, where are we going to be with artificial intelligence in cardiac electrophysiology? This would be the next step, disease prediction, and most importantly, three fields. Prediction of sudden cardiac death, prediction of ventricular arrhythmia, and prediction of atrial fibrillation. And most importantly, as the major cause of sudden cardiac death, prediction of myocardial infarction, which currently some groups are working very intensive on predicting myocardial infarction. And these, just these three, four items, predicting myocardial infarction, sudden death, atrial fibrillation, and ventricular arrhythmia will be a revolution in the field of cardiac electrophysiology and cardiology. So let's look at this interesting study, which showed that a deep learning algorithm can predict with accuracy close to 90% development using ECG in sinus rhythm can differentiate between patients who are going to get atrial fibrillation and those who remain in sinus rhythm. And this is very important. This is the first steps. They are not perfect, but they are big steps in the uh, correct direction. So these algorithms best based on deep learning showed we are able to predict atrial fibrillation before having atrial fibrillation. So you can just imagine what it means in stroke prevention, for example. So in the future, this is my vision. This is, I think, in the future, we have big data and we have variables. So I just chose the field of VT ablation in electrophysiology to see how electrophysiology would uh, be in coming years. So right now we have VT and we do the ablation, but in the future, the big data, the variables, and also the smartwatch and the devices like this will say to the patient, go to the doctor, you will get a ventricular fibrillation. Automatic image processing based on artificial intelligence can localize the possible targets for ablation, the exit site of the ventricular arrhythmia. And also, as you can see here, we will be able to do the virtual VT induction and virtual EPS study. And after that, go for the ablation. And I think this is the way that we'll we will see in the coming years in cardiac electrophysiology. There are two important points. First, there are still very important legal issues to be resolved. Who is responsible for the decision making of these algorithms? Is the doctor, is the algorithm, is the developer, is the user? So still there are many uncertainties in the legal issues regarding artificial intelligence in medicine. And the next one is how far should we go? How far are we willing to go to integrate artificial intelligence in medicine? And it means that we don't like to have full automation but unconditional automation and high automation is something that we will see coming in the coming years uh, in the near future. So we will soon be able to see high or conditional automation in the medical practice. And the most important thing is that as the Peter Drucker said, the best way to predict the future is to make the future, to shape the future. And this is our uh, mission as as doctors and as uh, medical personnel to involve ourselves in the process of artificial intelligence to medicine in order to keep it under our control. So at the end, I hope 
you enjoyed this presentation and I would like to recommend you if you are interested in this topic I can recommend you this article published in January 2019 in Nature Medicine once again thank you for your attention and thank you for inviting me to join this interesting and great congress thank you